Hi, my name is Kate and I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year teaching high school math. I thought today that I would do a quick video talking about my homework policy and just my homework process and all of that. I do know that homework is a very controversial subject. I'm not going to get into that aspect of it. I respect all opinions about giving homework, not giving homework, all of that. I just thought today that I would share with you guys how I deal with homework, how I grade homework, how my students turn homework in. I do assign homework to my students almost every day, but most of the time it's really short assignments. So I will give them mazes to complete. So here's an example of a maze that I might give my students. I might give my students a mystery. So here's an example of a mystery that I've used with my students. Sometimes it's just working through um, the color by number problems, something similar to this. And typically I give my students time in class to work on these before the end of the class period. And it may only be 10 minutes or so, but enough to get them started a little bit on the assignment. So the homework is due the next time that I see them in class. We are on a block schedule, so they have two days if I see them you know at the end of the week they have the weekend as well to get these done so it's never a I give it to you today it's due tomorrow situation so it does give the kids a little bit of time to get the assignments done so the homework is due at the start of class and I have my students turn their homework in through canvas that's our LMS and we are fortunate to have iPads in the classroom so I have my students use the notes app on their iPad and they scan this as a PDF and then they turn in the PDF into Canvas. I am in my notes app and I have just created a new note. So I'm going to click on the camera button and then instead of clicking take photo or video, I'm going to click scan documents. So I am going to scan this picture right here and you notice that it is pulling up this yellow box. Some of my kids wait around for it to be perfect and I tell them just take your picture and then you can adjust the box so that it encompasses the entire piece of paper and then hit keep scan. Now the nice thing is if I didn't have all of these pieces of paper here and I just had the one it would better detect, so move that out of the way, it will detect my piece of paper. So here, and I tell my kids before you hit keep scan, make sure that you know it didn't cut off the name, so if you need to readjust, and then I can say keep scan, and then I can scan the third page that I'm going to turn in, keep scan. Oh, now I've got my three pages and I can click save, and all of my pages are now in my note. Now what my students get hung up on is that they think that these are different files. It is just one file. So in order for them to turn this in on Canvas, they're gonna click on the picture. It doesn't matter which picture because you can see at the bottom, all three of them are there. Then they're gonna click the share button and or upload button. And then they're going to go to Canvas. And once it shares to Canvas, they will select what course they're in, they'll select then the uh, assignments will pop up. I don't have any courses right now because I'm in the middle of my two semesters. And then they could leave a comment. I tell my kids don't leave comments. I don't get notifications because I, that's just not, I don't want those. But even though they can only see one picture here, it does turn in all three and then they can hit submit. One of the things that my kids get hung up on is then they go in here and then they turn in a second one and then they turn in a third one and I tell them just do it one time. That's all you need to do. And then it gets turned in on Canvas and then I can see all three of these. So this is how my students use the notes app to upload their homework. Now this does only work if they have an iPad. I don't know other workarounds simply because my school does use iPads as their one to one device. If I was using Chromebook, I would either have to find a workaround or change the way I have them turn in homework. I'm not sure. So if you use Chromebooks and you have your students turn in homework digitally, I would love to know what you use.
is the reason why I do this is so that I don't have them turning in multiple files to grade. It's all one file and I can just scroll up and I can see everything rather than having to click on each individual picture that they turn in. This is something that I have been doing for eight, nine years. And as I show other teachers how to do this, they are forever grateful that they've learned this because it makes the grading process a lot easier. When students come in, I give them a few minutes to get their homework turned in, and then we go over the answers together. So I will grade their homework, but I only grade their homework on completion. So I just look and see, did they attempt every problem? And I give them a completion grade for this. So the homework is only worth four points for me. And it's just, you know, did they do it all? They get four points. Did they do more than half of it? Three points. Did they do about half of it? Two points and so on. And that's how I assign their grade. And their homework only counts for 15% of their grade. The rest of their grade goes towards projects, quizzes, tests, and their final exam. So when I grade it, again, just on completion, and I do look at what the students are doing, but I'm not marking everything right or wrong. If I did that, that would take me forever. So what I do after the students turn in the homework on Canvas at the start of class, we go over the answers together. So I will tell them, okay, take out a pen. Those of you guys that didn't do the homework, but you know, you're not allowed to write down the answers. Only people that turned it in should be grading. And then we go over the answers so that the students are able to see, yep, got this one right, got this one right. Nope, I got that one wrong. And they're getting that, okay, it's not immediate feedback because you know, they worked on it over the last couple of days, but at least they're seeing personally, yes, I got this right, I got this one wrong. Because you know, when you grade homework and you pass it back to the kids, most of the kids don't look at it. So it works well. And then after we go over the answers, then I go over questions that the kids have. Now, some classes don't ask any questions. And sometimes I know, okay, this was a particularly tricky question. And so I'll be sure to go over that one, even if they don't ask. But then I've got other classes that love to ask lots of questions. And depending on the class, sometimes I have to say, okay, we can only do three questions right now. And if we didn't get to your question, talk to me during independent work time, and then we can go over those together. So I have found over, I mean, I've been using this method, let's see, 17 years of teaching. So I've been doing this for 15 years with the just grading it in class and having the students check their answers. And it's just, it's been wonderful. It does take a few minutes out of the morning or the beginning of class, but I still find it to be overall for me, a lot of help. So some issues that I've come across and finding solutions for students turning in homework online, you know, there's that fear that they're turning in other people's homework because, you know, I'm not actually collecting it. So who knows how many times I'm grading or looking at the same assignment. So I do tell students that they have to have their name on their paper on however many sides, you know, if it's a two-sided worksheet, their name needs to be on both sides. So I try to put, you know, the name spot on there for the kids. And as I'm grading, if they don't have their name on their paper, I put a zero in Canvas. And then I leave a comment that says, you must have your name on your paper for full credit. Please turn it back in and I will regrade. And you know, I'll have a handful of kids every time I grade a homework assignment that don't have their name on there. It's not a big deal. They just put their name on it. They turn it back in and then I'm able to regrade those so it works pretty well. Um, yes, do I know that kids are copying, kids are taking other kids' homework? Yes, there is nothing that we can do to stop that, unfortunately. Um, but that's also why homework is only 15% of their grade. They're allowed to use that stuff on their quizzes. So if they're turning in all this homework that they've done and then come quiz time and they don't actually have those because they weren't their papers, well, then, you know, that just hurts them. So other things that I have set in place hopefully are kind of helping encourage kids to do that. So that is definitely my biggest thing is making sure kids have their name on their paper, even though when they turn it into Canvas, it's turned into their name. So that's just helped a little bit. The other thing, because I'm going over the answers in class, I tell the kids, if you don't have the work, you don't get any credit. So I don't care if you got all the right answers. If there is not any work to go along with those, you get zero. And I tell them, go ahead, do the work, turn it back in, and then I will regrade your assignment. So those are two things that I've used that have helped a little bit um, to, you know, ensure that hopefully kids are doing their work. 
As far as late work goes, I do take late work. However, I only take it until the day of that unit test. So if we're working in unit three, they can turn in all of their unit three homework, but the deadline is midnight the day of that unit three test. I also don't give them full credit for turning in late work. I give them half credit. I feel like having some sort of consequence for the kids does help encourage a lot of them to do their homework and do it on time. And it also, you know, shows them, hey, when you don't think, do things on time, pay bills, there are consequences, right? You owe more, you have a late fee. So things like that, just trying to do little things to try to help these kids realize, hey, just do it, do it on time. If there are extenuating circumstances, kids will talk to me, you know, hey, this was going on, can I turn it in, you know, by the end of next period? Yep, go ahead and do that. As long as it's not like a chronic thing, I'm absolutely happy to work with kids with specific situations. So I do understand things happen. I've got my own kids in middle school, high school, and sometimes the work doesn't get done. So I do understand that. Um, but for the most part, I give half credit if they turn it in late. And again, they can only turn it in until the unit test. And the reason for that, part, one of the reasons, again, I know that this is a big controversial thing as well. This is just my opinion and my thoughts on this. My one of my colleagues accepts homework until the end of the semester. And then by the end of the semester, she's got kids that are turning in every single homework assignment. Is it really helping them at that point to cram in 72 homework assignments in two days? No, they're not learning anything. I feel like doing it over time is definitely helping them more. So again, it's not a right or a wrong answer. That's just my personal belief of how I do things. One difference that I do with my pre-calculus students compared to the others is rather than going over the answers at the start of class, I post the answers in their assignment on Canvas so that as they're working through these problems, they can check their answers. There are some exceptions if they're working on types of problems that don't really require any work. So when we were reviewing um, simplifying exponents, I didn't post answers. We're going to be moving into the unit circle. So they're going to be finding exact trig values. So with those, I'm not going to post the answers right away just because I don't want them to just look at the answers and copy those down because there's no work. But I found overall for my pre-calculus kids, because I'm trying to fit so much into one class period that going over all of the answers and then questions took too much time. So I post the answers in Canvas along with the assignment and then at the start of class, as soon as they've turned in the homework and they have the same policy for turning in homework and late work and all of that. But rather than just going over the answers first, I just go over a couple of questions, but I only go over two or three questions. And then again, tell them if you have other questions, talk to me during work time and I will be happy to help you work through those other questions. So that's just a little bit of a difference that I do with my pre-calc kids. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. I would be interested to know what is your homework policy? What are some things that you do? What are some things that you think that um, have definitely helped you save time with grading homework? Uh, let's start conversations below. So leave your comments about homework, your policies in the description below. I'd love to start those conversations. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey of teaching high school, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I do upload videos every Friday and I will talk to you later. Bye.